Can you hear me, right? Hello? Okay. So you see this uh, structure design that also a uh, revised in the structure design. Oh, that's good. Zoom has actually removed the 40 minute time limit. Okay, good. Now, uh, you take a look, the comparison of the structure loads between the CP4 and EC7. EC7 need to take note, uh, actually we, they reduce the effective area of the pulse uh, so that So that the you can to take note of because of the, there's no permanent casing. Actually, in Singapore, we don't use permanent casing. Uh. We don't use permanent casing. Okay. Now I want you to refer you to the LTA CDC requirement. LTA CDC requirement asks you to use the smaller of the both from CP4 and EC7. Okay. Now the reinforcement required also they have a specific guideline on what to use. I don't want to touch so much because this one is mainly still on the structure aspect. Huh? I want to talk about your tanker aspect. Now, the length of the reinforcement, usually in Singapore, has long is not a tension pile or is a, not a lateral pile. The reinforcement is a standard 12 meter length. But now, it already specified now in the EC7, the length of reinforcement must go beyond the soft clay, okay? And with a minimum of 10 meter from the cutout level. Now, why they want to do this? Recall just now the Shanghai apartment collapse, right? Yeah. So this is a possible in the soft clay, you even though you don't do any excavation on your side, you cannot control, you cannot control other people doing excavation beside you. Okay? So this is to safeguard your own building foundation, such that this kind of thing will not happen. The thing that the incident, accident in Shanghai will not happen in, to us. Now, the second question is, what if the reinforcement is extend all the way to the power tool? Actually, EC7 allow you to increase the capacity, okay, to take advantage of the steel reinforcement. But that is not beyond, that is not within our scope here. Now, Load test, very important. In EC7, the more load test you do, you were able to get a more favorable uh, partial factor, meaning you don't need to reduce your resistance by so much. Okay? But in BCA, BCA already specified the number of tests required. You cannot avoid uh, not doing the load test. You must do, basically, you need to do. Okay, you need to do. And the need to take note that the model factor has been revised from 1.4 and 1.2 to 1.55 and 1.35 already. Okay, you have to be, these days are changing times, okay? Authority is keep on improving on the design method to so that to make sure that EC7 is uh, can cater the design to local condition, which is why we keep on having uh, keep on a lot of updates to the national annex. Now why the model factors are increased later you will see. Okay you must remember last time CB4 we just use one lump sum factor which is 2.5. But in EC7 they allow you to take different safety factor on the friction and the uh, end bearing okay so later i will explain to you why they want to revise this thing now lta people uh, lta people you take note uh, lta is even more complicated on the testing and i noticed a lot of lta project also never follow strictly this thing because this is simply too stringent okay it's simply too stringent okay so i just let you know that that is for different kind of LTA structure, whether it's a viaduct, tunnel, stations, above ground station, even up to POB, there's a different test requirement. Okay? You need to go and read. I will send you this thing already. You're supposed to read about it. Huh? So I don't want to go through. I, I don't have time to go through this thing. Now, still talking about load test. Now we're talking about settlement. Why settlement is important? Because the Eventually, 
all the high rise building, once they have a settlement, they will have tilt. Because we can't control the building to settle at the same magnitude. They are bound to settle differently. That's why we are concerned about the differential settlement. And based on so many data around the world, as long as your power don't settle more than 15 mm, under 1.5 times the working load last time, or now we call the characteristic load under BCA requirement, your power, your building is unlikely to suffer from differential settlement. Okay? So this you must remember. Okay? Because this will detect whether your power meets the design requirement or not. Now, do you know how to estimate power settlement? I also do not have time to go into this thing because this is a whole another, it takes another one hour plus to talk about power settlement. Now, LTACDC requirement, uh, LTAC is very interesting. They don't talk about the allowable settlement. They talk about the short term and long term settlement. Okay, you look, look at the deep foundation element. They are talking about 15 and 25. What is short term, what is long term, they also define here. Now, however, however, they still impose a SLS failure criteria, meaning to say, you notice he mentioned here that the at 1.5 time representative load, which is currently called the characteristic load, it cannot exceed 14 mm. Okay, this is better than the, the previous DCA requirement. Okay, but the, at the second cycle cannot exceed 7 mm. So these are the LTA requirements. So for those people who are from overseas who don't understand what I mean by LTA, LTA means stand for Land Transport Authority, uh, which is the, the authority that uh, in charge of building all the viaducts, station, tunnels, and, and all kinds of uh, road structures. Okay, so we need to fulfill this requirement. Sometimes the requirements are more stringent than the building control requirement. Sometimes they are not so. Okay. Now, this is uh, also extracted from the net uh, one of the projects that we actually monitor the whole superstructure. You will notice that uh, this thing built up to 43 story. It only set up 8 mm. But this is not to show off that the design is very good, that it, up to 43 story is only mm. It's just to show you that actually as you build your superstructure, adding load towards the power, the power will continue to settle. So if next time you are designing for a foundation and after you finish construction of a foundation and people come in to build the, the, the stories, the floor structure and everything, and you notice that this building is keep on settling, you do not need to worry because it's normal, because this is actually what you design for. Okay? So in LTA terms, this is actually called the short-term settlement. When the whole project is completed, technically they need to monitor some more, uh, uh, a certain period of time. Okay, even L in BCA regulation also requires to monitor the building until to make sure that the building has completed all the settlement and that will be so-called the long-term settlement. And that long-term settlement by right cannot exceed 15 mm. Okay, clear? Huh? Now, that's why it brings us to what is an EC7 concept. EC7 concept talk about two failure state. What is, one is called the ultimate limit state. One is called the serviceability limit state or short form SLS. Now, ULS means it will not fail. SL means it will not cause excessive settlement. Now, you see, uh, all our codes, it's not so uh, clear as to what is the definition of failure? What is the definition of excessive? Your excessive, definition of excessive and my definition of excessive may be different. I may feel 15 mm is excessive. You may feel only 50 mm is excessive. So it's quite subjective. But actually, we already have a guide, like I told you now, we cannot exceed 15 mm at one time characteristic load. Now, second question is, which state will govern the design? If your design can satisfy the ultimate limit state, does it mean that it will automatically satisfy the service limit state? I leave this question open first because later we will bring you through. Now, 
general procedure for EC7, you calculate the design action. Remember, if you cannot, you are still from the CP4 time and you cannot understand what is action, you just convert action into load. Okay? Compute with then you compute the resistance from soil parameters, which is your capacity. Or you derive resistance from load test and ground test. Okay, that's assuming you are doing load test. Then you convert resistance to characteristic values using modification factor. Okay, so characteristic, uh, you convert down. Uh, then you calculate the shaft and base resistance. Then you calculate the, the resistance. Actually, this, this word is wrong. Uh. Actually, it's not called total characteristic resistance. It should be the total design resistance must be greater than the design action. Okay, it must be ultimate is to ultimate because this thing also not prepared by me. So I forgot to correct this thing. So it's, take note now, the last table, if you should be con calculating the design shaft and design base resistance and use a total design resistance to be greater than design action. Never mind, we will go through the example, they will know better. Okay, now design approach. Actually, EG7 got three approaches, but we only concern about approach number one, which is the one used in Singapore. Okay, which is the one used in Singapore. Can I? Now. Approach number one got two design combination. Combination is similar to our load cases. So in combination one, we need to apply a load factor or now we call partial factor to the loading, which is called the action, and also to the soil parameters. Okay, in combination two, we need to use load factor applied to the action, to the ground resistance, and sometimes to the soil parameters. Now in combi two, uh, later why is there's an M1 or M2? M2 is used to calculate unfavorable action on pulse due to negative skin fission. Okay, what is negative skin fission? This is to those students you may not understand. What is negative skin fission now? To many of those engineers who are not who are young engineers who have not been doing design or site engineers, you also will not understand negative skin fission. But you just take it that this is a form of loading first at this moment. Okay, I don't have time to touch on this thing. Okay, so very simple. Huh? You so design approach number one, combi one. You apply this uh, load factor to your dead load and live load. Okay, in this case, they call the permanent action or variable action. Permanent action is our dead load last time, what we call dead load. Variable is the live load. Okay, so different combi, you use different load factor. Take note, uh, for structure engineer, some of you are structure engineer here. The bridges has a different set of partial factors. Uh. So people who do design bridges for LTA, uh, this you have to follow another set of partial factor, which is very, very complicated. I read through. It's not beyond, it's beyond today's scope. Okay. This is the factors, this is extracted from the national NX. Okay, you can go and read through. I just summarize for you. Uh. This is what you always see in all the piling drawing, they will always use this number and show you that. Okay, now, I don't want to go through a number, it's cell explanatory. You just take note of the symbol, that G and Q. G stands for dead load, Q stands for live load or variable action in here, in this sense. Now, then we talk about M. You notice, we don't want to talk about M2 first. M2 is talking about those uh, like, Loading like negative skin fissions. We you notice in both combi the M1 is one. That means to say we don't take any factor on the soil parameters for EC7. Okay, you take note, uh, I, I highlight the note. Uh, the note is referring to M2. Actually, I want to talk something. You know when to apply this note. Okay, you read this note carefully, uh, it's it's not so straightforward, but I have no time to talk about this one here. I just leave, give you points to ponder. Now, R4 is a resistance. Okay, R4, okay. In combi one, is R1. Okay, it's R1. We don't take the, the motivation factor, okay? So, in R, R, R4, this is what? Okay, I want to explain about R4 is that, R4 is talking about 
why there are two table? One is talking about without explicit verification of SLS. Okay. The other one is a with explicit verification of SLS. It means SLS means you do load tests. That's why I told you just now, if you do load tests in EC7, they allow you to use a smaller uh, safety factor. Okay, so you notice the base and the shaft is different. The base use a more higher safety factor and the shaft use a lesser safety factor. Okay, and even in tension, they use a higher safety factor. Now, next thing, you notice they also differentiate whether it's a driven power or ball power. And you notice driven power, the safety factor is actually lower. Why? Why ball power, the R4 factors are lower than those of driven power? Okay? I leave it you to think because this one involves construction. Okay, there's also different design method. You can use a load test. You can use the model power method which based on how many SI you can use different uh, modification factor, model factors. Or you can use the uh, observational method. But today we only talk about the alternative method which is closer to the Car, our previous design method. Oh, 